Welcome to Greenshine Farmer's video blog about a family starting a farm and going back to the homestead lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to Greenshine Farmers. Today we're going to do an episode on a question I get asked quite a lot, and that's how much money can you actually make on a small farm? We're here on just about half an acre in production, actually a little bit less than that, because this area over here, which is probably almost a third of an acre, isn't even in production yet. So we're, we're probably on less than a half acre in actual production. And uh, in this episode, we're just going to kind of go over what we sell, how we sell it, who we sell it to, and just some tips and tricks that I've found over the years to, to help this all cash flow. Okay, now this crop here is a loose leaf lettuce mix uh, by Johnny's. It's called the, uh, it's called the All Star Lettuce Mix. And this is something we do a lot of. Now we do a combination of this and cut and come again varieties like Salanova and, and other uh, head lettuce. And I think for us the ideal blend is probably half head lettuce, half uh, loose leaf lettuce. They both have their pros and cons. The head lettuce seems to hold up a lot better um, just to, to washing and, and everything. It seems to be less prone to bruising, but it takes a lot longer to harvest. And um, also, you know, you have to start it in the greenhouse, and so it's, it's a little bit more work. Uh, the loose leaf is great because you can just run the cedar, and if you see here, this is the bed I took today. Now this is a 100 foot bed, probably like a 3 foot, it's, and off of this one bed here, but I mean, I filled up 14 totes. And so we're talking probably around 100, maybe 120 pounds, and that's just the first cut. So with the loose leaf stuff, I mean, it's super easy to get into the ground. And in, in less than a month, you, you've got a crop that's ready to harvest. And like I said, just off of this one bed, we're looking at around 100, 120 pounds. Now what that translates in terms of revenue is we are selling our salad mix, um, you know, pre-washed, pre-mixed, ready to go. And we're selling it for about eight bucks a pound. And we're selling to wholesale distributors, uh, we're selling to grocery stores, and we're selling to restaurants. And honestly, I mean, if you want to look at what the industrial food system is selling salad mix for, it's it's probably in the four to five dollar range. I think probably around, you know, somewhere around four twenty-five. It's all coming from California. So with our stuff, you're getting it within forty-eight hours every single time. Here we are in another one of our tunnels, and I've got uh, this right here was a kale mix. This is something we get from high mowing seeds, and. Um, yeah, it's called the Iron Man Kale Mix. And you know, off of this bed, I think I probably got around six totes. So you're probably not gonna get the same yield as a loose, loose leaf lettuce, but it gives us some variety. It gives us another product to add to the mix. And uh, it seems to do pretty well. So again, one bed, we're talking six totes, maybe about 50 pounds, and that's first cut. So if you see a theme here, it's that we're doing quick growing crops that we can harvest uh, you know, one person can harvest this bed in 15 minutes and, um, you know, and that we can sell for a good price. And it's a product that really lends itself to, uh, to getting it local. You know, we're going to go in this hoop house over here and uh, we've got some cabbage here. Now, I planted this cabbage out in the winter. You know, we had the bed space and um, it came available from one of the greenhouses that we buy from. So we said, you know, okay, let's put out some cabbage. The thing is, if I try to sell these heads of cabbage, I'm not going to make anything off of that. I mean, these guys have been in the ground since probably February, and uh, we just won't make anything off of this bed. A head of cabbage goes for maybe 59 cents a pound. Uh, I might be able to get a dollar a pound, but even still, it's, it's just not worth it. So. Honestly, what we're going to do here is we're just going to make all this in a sauerkraut. Um, <laughs> we eat sauerkraut with every meal, and we made some delicious sauerkraut last year. Okay, now this is our herb row, and um, I don't want to make it sound like the only thing you can make money on on a small scale is, is salad mix, because I don't, I don't really think that's true. Um, you know, longer season crops like cabbage, potatoes, that's going to be tough to make money on. But, you know, there are other things that you can incorporate. Um, into your farm. So, you know, here, you know, we've just, we've got some thyme, lavender, 
and we've got some sage. And over here, we've had this since we started our farm pretty much. We planted this oregano out last year. Herbs are something that I think every small farm should be doing. Um, it's just such an easy crop. These beds don't need to be turned. I don't even water them. I mean, they're hardy. Once they're established, they just, they just produce. And if you're selling to restaurants, if you're selling to grocery stores, farmer's market, I mean, fresh herbs is another one of those things that a lot of stuff from the industrial food system, by the time it gets here, it's not good anymore. So how do we sell it? Well, I'll sell it in half pound bags or pound bags to chefs for anywhere between 12 and $20, depending on uh, per pound, depending on what it is. Um, for grocery stores, we package it in one ounce clamshells and, uh, and, and we sell those for two bucks a piece and they seem to move pretty well. Okay, now another thing we're trying to do is to incorporate a little bit more variety. So we've been doing celery and we're trying to really nail it. Now celery is a little more nuanced. Um, these heads are a little bit smaller than I would like. We did take some pretty big ones. Um, you know, some of the heads were huge. Some of the heads we're actually selling at $2. So the big ones we're selling for $3.50 and people are gobbling them up. The smaller ones we're selling for $2 and again, they seem to be moving really well. Not too many people grow celery in this area. I think we're one of two farms that is maybe growing celery. It's really nice to incorporate different crops into your rotation just, just for the fact that once you have an account, whether it be a restaurant or a grocery store, and, and you've built up that relationship, if, if I have something, like if I have radishes or I have celery, I'm going to sell it all. It's, it's really easy to just say, hey, I've also got this, and the relationship's there, they know the quality's going to be there, and so it's just a nice, easy thing to add on to, to, to what you're already doing and, and be a nice, you know, maybe five, six hundred dollar boost, you know, at the end of the week. All right, we got some lacinato, aka dino kale in here, and this stuff is finishing up. Again, this was another one of our crops that we planted out in the winter, and uh, we've been picking from it pretty much every week for the past month and a half. And even though it doesn't sell for, you know, we're selling it for $2 a bunch, which seems to be kind of the going rate, um, it doesn't take much to, it, it, you know, it produces, so maybe we're getting, you know, $50 a week, but we've probably been harvesting it for maybe, you know, seven or eight weeks. So even though it's, it's not like a quick growing, you know, get it in, get it out sort of crop, it's consistent and it's an easy thing to add. And something like, you know, kale is kind of always in demand. It's just a very common thing. People know what to do with it. And so it's, it's an easy sell for us. But, you know, if you're really limited on how much space you have, that might be one that I kind of hold off on. All right, here we are in a greenhouse, and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about what we have going on in here. Now, anytime you've got a, a hoop house like this, you really wanna maximize what you're getting out of it. So, you know, we've got our tomatoes here. We're just starting to, just starting to actually trellis them. A little behind on that, you know, it's that time of year, so we're just trying to play catch up. But yeah, we're, we're just starting to trellis these guys now, and we're stripping off all the leaves below the kneecap just to, um, just to get some good airflow and to, and to really encourage them to grow vertical. Now you've got under here, we're doing our sunflower shoots, and then we've got even some okra shoots. And uh, you know, with the microgreens, that's something that is a quick growing crop and it sells for a good price. However, there's a lot of nuance to it. So if, um, you know, basically, if, if the temperature is not right, if they're getting too much sunlight, if they're getting overwatered, underwatered, they don't put up with it well. You know, we've got some pea shoots over here that we're about to harvest. But um, once you get it nailed and dialed in, the demand seems to be pretty good and the numbers definitely work out. So, you know, anytime you can incorporate something like a microgreen, um, it, you know, it tends to, be, uh, tends to be worth your while. Okay, this is one of my favorite plants right here. This is basil, and um, we've just got it on drip irrigation. Actually, our whole plot is on drip irrigation now. Um, and this is just an extremely productive plant. It takes a while to get going, but once it, get, it gets going, it really produces. So you can see here how it's starting to branch out. So we just topped these last week, and when you top them, it sprouts two. And, and then it just starts, you know, you top those and it sprouts four. So it really starts getting big and bushy in a hurry. And uh, again, this is just such a low maintenance crop. I mean, if you keep it covered, it stays pretty happy. And so, what we've got here is, um, you know, it's just, it's all under the tunnel, which should help stave off things like um, uh, downy mildew is something you have to watch out for. 
with these. Um, they do sell some downy mildew resistant varieties that I would definitely recommend. This is just a Genovese variety from High Mowing. And um, the thing with basil, like I said, it grows fast, it's always in demand, and we're selling it for two bucks in those one ounce blister packs, so you're getting $32 a pound. It, you don't have to wash it, um, you just harvest it. The only thing, you want to make sure that you're keeping it at the right temperature. We can't put it in our walk-in cooler because that's set at 34 degrees, so we keep it in a cooler with ice packs, and we try to keep that around 50 degrees, which is what it likes. If you put it in something that's, you know, 34 degrees, it's going to get these brown spots on you, and it's no good. Okay, this is one more crop I wanted to talk about, and this is sunchokes, uh, Jerusalem artichokes, and these guys are just awesome. I bought maybe three pounds at Whole Foods uh, a couple years ago, and I just threw them in here, and they took off like crazy. And this is a crop that just grows, I mean, and it's something that is in demand, but you're only going to get one harvest a year, so, but it's so low maintenance. It, it just it just grows and you pull this up and I think out of these two four by eight foot beds we got over a hundred pounds I'd say I don't remember the exact number but it was definitely over a hundred pounds I sold them for four bucks a pound and we definitely could have gotten more so if you've got a plot of, of land that you don't really know what to do with why not throw some sun chokes out there I mean they they will spread they will spread like crazy. I mean, you can even see they're uh, starting to come under here. So, um, so maybe put it in an area that's kind of just that you don't mind it sort of taking over because it will. But man, what a productive, just low maintenance crop. And if you put out, you know, a decent area of this and you had the way to sell it, you know, um, you could have a nice little end of the year, you know, four or five grand bonus waiting for you and anything like that. I mean, it's just so crucial because, you know, a lot of times week to week, especially in the early years, you know, you might not be making a lot of money at the end of the day. You might not be netting very much, but to have some low maintenance, just bonus crops waiting for you at the end of the season could really be nice. You know, that could be money to put up, you know, two or three high tunnels and actually, you know, get you through the winter. So just some thoughts. Um, let's go check out our pack shed and we'll talk a little bit more about, you know, really where the value of what we do comes from. So with salad mix, um, you know, a lot of the value that is there is coming because it's it's sort of a value-added product. Uh, we are, you know, we're we're washing it, we're drying it, we're packing it, and we're we're pre-mixing it. So it's basically ready to go. And I, you know, I think why why don't more farms do the the salad greens uh, like we do? And and, and I think it honestly comes down to the processing. There's a lot of nuance to it, and we're going to be doing a video coming up on all those nuances. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this one. I'm sure you've got some questions, so please leave them in the comments down below. This can help some people. If, if you're, you're thinking about starting a farm or you already have a farm, I hope there's something in here to kind of help you uh, because really at the end of the day, you know, I hate how obsessed over numbers I have to be, but that's sort of just the name of the game. You really have to look at this as a business, and unfortunately that involves just really knowing where your numbers are, how much you're spending, and then what you need to make every week. You know, I'll definitely keep you guys posted as we progress, and I just really want to thank everybody. We've got a lot of people that comment on our videos and say some really nice things, and they support us, and you know, that, that really goes a long way. I don't think it goes unnoticed. We really do appreciate it. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time. If you guys like this video, and you'd like to see more like it, leave us a comment down below. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, visit us at greenshinefarms.com and follow us on Instagram at greenshinefarms. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.